Of course, with a rig like this, you could always just go ahead and run Windows on it, but you know, having SteamOS 3 just kind of makes it a whole different experience, at least in my opinion, and being able to play a lot of my favorite older games at 4K and the newer AAA stuff at 1440 really does make this an awesome Linux gaming rig. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at Steam Deck OS, otherwise known as Steam OS 3, running on my open air minimal PC that I recently put together. So I've done one video with the assembly. We ran Windows on it. Great performer. We've got a 6 core, 12 thread, Ryzen, 5000 series CPU, and a Radeon 6000 series GPU. And in the grand scheme of things, it was a relatively cheap build to put together. I utilized used parts from eBay when it comes to the motherboard, RAM, and CPU, but since then I've actually been taking a look at prices on this GPU I have here, and you can pick these up for about $70 cheaper than I paid. I actually bought a brand new Radeon RX 6600 for this rig, but yeah, they're available on eBay, the non-XT variants, and they perform absolutely amazing with Linux gaming. Not to mention, if you just want to go with Windows with it, that'll be totally fine also. Handles high-end emulation at 1440p and 4K, depending on the emulator you're using. And it runs a lot of the newer AAA games at high ultra 1440p. Some of the newer stuff, if you want to go to ultra, you'll have to drop that resolution down a bit. But high 1440p for most of the stuff that's on the market right now is totally possible with this machine. Taking a quick look at the specs, for the CPU, I opted to go with something a bit cheaper than an X variant. I went with the Ryzen 5 5600 non-X. We've got 6 cores, 12 threads, and a boost up to 4.4 gigahertz. This is actually one of my favorite 5000 series chips on the market. 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz, running in dual channel. A used ASRock B450 mini ITX motherboard from eBay. I've got the ASRock Radeon RX 6600 with 8GB of GDDR6 VRAM a 1TB Kingston M.2 SSD, a 550W power supply, and I just used an open-air test bench kind of case that you could pick up on AliExpress for around 20 bucks. I actually really do like the way it came out. The first video I made on this rig, we did the build, tested out Windows with some AAA gaming and some emulation. If you're interested in checking that video out, I'll leave a link for that in the description. But in this one, we're running SteamOS 3, and in order to get this up and running, we're going to be using an operating system known as Hollow ISO. Unfortunately, Valve hasn't released a public uh, SteamOS 3 or Steam Deck operating system that we can, uh, you know, get our hands on. So the team over at Hollow ISO basically took the Steam Deck recovery image, reworked a bunch of stuff in it so we can run it on different systems. Now, at the time of making this video, you definitely want to use an AMD GPU, be it a dedicated graphics card or even an APU, because uh, NVIDIA cards just really aren't that compatible with game mode right now. But I've had a really good experience with this operating system. I really enjoy using it, and since we've got that Steam Deck UI, it does make a great couch gaming PC. So I've got the operating system installed and I've already done a lot of setup here. Uh, it's really easy to install actually. If you've ever done any kind of operating system installation, then you shouldn't have an issue installing Hollow ISO. You can install it from a USB drive, you could even run it from a USB drive if you wanted to. Or you could install it to an internal drive or external drive. Usually I have an external drive set up with it, that way I could test on a bunch of different systems. But right now I've got it installed to the internal M.2 SSD here. And of course, using the official Steam controller would make you feel a lot more at home, but uh, unfortunately I'm just not a huge fan of it. So I've just connected my Xbox controller over Bluetooth. And the Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth module that came pre-installed with this mini ITX board does work with Linux. It's based on Intel, so there was no further setup. I mean, everything's just working right out of the box with Hollow ISO. The only thing you're really not going to be able to control with the PC from SteamOS itself or game mode here is the TDP for the CPU or GPU. We can't uh, set up any kind of power profiles yet inside of uh, SteamOS 3. Now, if we swap over to desktop mode, we could always download a third-party application, be it a uh, CPU tune or even something like Ryzen Adjust, and we can fully control the TDP on the CPU from there. But, you know, having a slider ready to go like you do on the Steam Deck just doesn't work yet in Hollow ISO. But since we're working with the desktop system, this thing's going to be running at full boat anyway. The CPU I'm using here is a 65 watt part, and yeah, we can boost up to 4.4 gigahertz on all of those cores while running our favorite games. So with all that out of the way, it's time to see how this thing performs, and we're going to jump right into it with Elden Ring. 
All right, so here it is at 1440p, high settings. Unfortunately, maximum settings here just doesn't work out very well with the RX 6600 at 1440p, but if you need to go to max, we can always drop that resolution down to 1080, run it at 60 all day. I know when the 6000 series cards were initially released, there were a lot of reviewers complaining about the price and performance, but these are going for around $230, and I really don't think it's a bad deal for what we have here, especially with the Linux compatibility. And if you wanted to go used with it, you can actually get one of these for around $160 on eBay. And check out the Cyberpunk 2077 performance. 1440p, high. We can get an average of around 73 FPS out of this game. And, you know, I don't mind locking these games down at 60, turning V-Sync on, and playing these AAA games at 60 high settings at 1440p. And again, with basically everything that we're going to show off here, if you need to go to Ultra or Maximum Settings, 1080 is where it's going to be. With Horizon Zero Dawn at 1440p high, we got an average of 72 FPS. Absolutely beautiful game. This is one I played through on the PlayStation 5. Love this game, and just seeing it running in Linux like this is really awesome. Now, I want you to find some rocks that fit the cup of your hand. Why? Do as I say, Aloy, and gather the rocks. I will show you how to use them. Good. That's it. Obviously, The Witcher 3 is an older game, and I suspected we'd get great performance out of this. I was actually hoping we could do 4K at high with this, but we're right there under 60 at 4K. With the newest update, we do have access to DirectX 12, and we've also got some scaling options. So if you don't mind setting FSR to something like performance at 4K high settings, you could run this just fine, but I still think it looks great at 1440p high. I don't have an issue whatsoever with the quality right now. God of War is another one that performs great, 1440p, high, and to tell you the truth, I mean with everything that I've tested here in Windows and Linux, I'm seeing about a 10 to 15 FPS drop in Linux compared to Windows, but it's not enough to kind of, you know, sway me to go back over to Windows because I'm well over 60 with all of the games that I want to run, and you got to remember we're using Proton here, so we've got that compatibility layer to get these running in Linux, so there will be a little degradation in performance, but in my opinion, it's totally worth it having this really streamline operating system that we could just run on our big screen TV in the living room. So with Miles Morales, I actually went up to very high to see if we could, you know, hit that steady 60 with it. I got a few dips really close to going under, so I just enabled FSR at that quality preset, and uh, we're good to go. It still looks great and plays just fine in Linux. So when it comes to all of the newer AAA games that we've taken a look at so far, 1440p high has kind of been the sweet spot there. But when it comes to the older games or more optimized games, 4K maxed out is totally possible with a lot of this stuff. Project Cars 2, 4K, very high. We can get an average of 84 FPS. And I also wanted to throw a really old one in there. We've got Left 4 Dead 2. This is maxed out at 4K, and I do get some hiccups here and there. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. It could be those Vulcan shaders, but on average, we got around 180 FPS. But if you take a look, we do get some micro stuttering going on, and, you know, probably playing through this a little more might alleviate that, but it was a bit odd just going straight into the game. So obviously, we're getting some amazing gaming performance out of this machine using Hollow ISO. And we've also got another layer to this operating system. As a lot of you already know, we do have desktop mode. So we'll head over there right now. And when it's time to get some work done, or you know, you just want to kind of browse the web, check out some 4K YouTube video playback, we can use this as a full-fledged Linux PC. So uh, from the uh, app store here, we could actually go through and download video editors, photo editors, basically anything we can do on Windows, we can do here. And there's always a free application for it. Browsing the web, super snappy. I do have Wi-Fi 6 here, or you could go with Ethernet if you want to, but if you wanted to do some 4K video playback from YouTube or an external drive or internal, not a problem. And of course, emulation. So just heading in here, we do have an emulator section, and we've got more than enough power for PSP, PS2, GameCube, Wii, Wii U, PS3, even Xbox and Switch emulation would run really well on this machine in Linux. So in the end, I do think that this is a great combo for gaming in general. Whether you want to do it in Windows or Linux, the choice is really yours. And that's the great part about PCs nowadays. We've got a lot of different choices that we can make with our operating systems and the way we want to play our games. 
But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in checking out how this thing performs in Windows, link for that video is down below. And if you want to put together a similar rig, I'll also leave links in the description just so you can kind of pick and choose. I think it's a great combo, but you know, in the end, it's really up to you. I'd love to know what you thought about the performance here with SteamOS 3 in this build. And you know, if there's anything else you'd change about it, let me know down below. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.